Okay, let's get started again. Okay, so here I have um, uh, another solution to our um, Caesar cipher problem. Um, and um, we do some pattern matching on values to um, handle some wraparound. And um, we have our encryption and our decryption of a character are almost exactly um, identical. And um, we have an encrypt and a decrypt that are pretty close to. And honestly, with not too much elbow grease, I think we could um, make this quite a bit more succinct, but it's also very clear what's going on. Basically, if we, get, if we ever get the key zero, we just return the message as is. Otherwise, um, we're still gonna use recursion and we're gonna use a map, but we're gonna re rely on predecessor and successor to do the shifting for us. And so we're gonna map um, um, encrypt n times where n is uh, the amount of the key. So if the key is five, we're gonna map um, suck successor function five times, which will just shift the whole message five characters. Boom, 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 boom. And if we uh, um, call this again with a key of 10, it'll just do it 10 times. And um, really, we could probably make this, um, we could probably change this around pretty easily so that, so that like I said, to reduce a, quite a bit of code. But uh, the thing that I really want to focus on is that we're not um, twiddling the bits. I shouldn't say twiddling the bits. That's inaccurate. But we're not going in and getting characters by indices and then creating raw new strings. We're just transforming with this map. And um, I think because of that, it makes uh, the code a lot clearer and also um, has some some other nice qualities that we can rely upon. But now it's time to move on to our next uh, cipher. So this is the uh, transposition cipher. So this is a fun one. I think quite a bit funner than our Caesar cipher. So the way that this works is that um, we would get a key, which again is gonna be a number. And the number tells us how many columns we want our secret message to be encoded to. So let's say the key is going to be five. So that would create one, two, three, four, five columns. And then um, we would get like some input text. So um, if it was something like uh, Gandalf is cooler than Harry, what we'd do is we'd write uh, Gandalf space is cooler than Harry. And then for these spaces, we'd make empty spots. So then when we transcribe this out, instead of reading the, it this way, we'd read the text this way. So this becomes, uh, now this is where like my writing is a problem, but uh, something like uh, G 
L C R N R space, no, sorry, G R A F O space, space, Y N space, O T H space, and then you skip these, D I L N A space, skip A. S E A R space skip. So let's um, just try solving this as uh, programmers. Before we go straight into writing the code, let's maybe try to come up with an algorithm about how this code works and see if we can figure out a way to to automate it, right? So let's, and let's take a, a smaller thing. Let's just do Gandalf is cool. And we'll do a key of size uh, four. G A N D. O L Gandalf space I S space and then this one gets left out. So that becomes G A I O A L S O N F space L D space C. So is the length of the resulting cipher always a multiple of what we did as No, so that's why we have this leftover box here is because it's not and we we ignore those. Okay. So if there were three ignored, so if there was a box box then this would be G A I O A L S N, not a space. That's one way to think about it. Let's just think about like without getting into the details of like what programming language we would use. Like, what's an algorithm? What's an al how can we think about this algorithmically? How can we solve the problem? So we could say, so yeah, so, so, one, so let's, one way to kind of think about this, if I understand you correctly, is like we need to get these columns, right? And the columns are going to be, so like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this is 0, 4, 8, 12, 1, 5, 9, uh, 13, So the commonality is the four here, right? So column one is going to be every fourth character starting on zero. Column, sorry, column zero is going to be every fourth character starting on zero. Column one is going to be every fourth character starting on one, and so on and so forth. And so really, if we went through this thing and grabbed, so if we had our first for loop is a column. And then for each column, 
we collect each character that's multiples of four starting on that column, then we're going to be in business. And then we just concatenate, right? And with the thing that if we get out of bounds, we want to throw it away. So um, we don't, there are some for loops in Haskell, but they're kind of, um, but we can express the idea of a for loop with Haskell um, recursively, right? So what if we did something like we said, like 0 to key length, sorry, to key minus 1. So now we've got a list that goes from, if the key's 5, we'd have a list that goes from 0 to 4. And we could probably uh, fold over that. Um, or um, even map over it either way and end up that for instead of, so if we have 0, 1, 2, 3, we could end up with something like a list of lists where this one is 0, 4, 8, 12. And this one is 1, 5, 9, 13, and so on. And then we could translate that to the letters. And then we could smush them all down. So that's one way you could do it. And you could, you could start with that and then eliminate some steps. Um, so uh, take a stab at it. Get cracking. And then get mad at me at how I'm making, it, making you do it all the hard way and then showing you the easy way after. <laughs> but it's good. I, even though um, it's, it's, good, it's a good brain exercise to use. Sometimes I'll sit down and just try to use like a fold or something that I'm not as comfortable with, even if it's not necessarily the perfect thing to solve something, just to get that way of thinking more elastic in my brain. And so that's part of what I'm aiming to have y'all do today. Yeah? Boom. Boom, boom. Shake the room. Yeah, well, that's the good one. That's that's the uh, that's the Haskell cheat mode. There is, um, well, as in that that you'd import it from T, or the. Yeah. When I saw that, when I was working through this exercise myself, when I saw that, I was like, oh my goodness. It's good to do the hard way first. But... Yeah, it's good to do the hard way. Get practice working with these structures, but. Um... Okay, so if you've gotten that one, so, uh, I mean, I'll just show you the easy one now. It doesn't need to be a secret. It's very similar. Yeah, I mean, it is. Um, and and uh, so 
there's in in this package um, uh, chunks of no, this isn't tight. text one um, for us. Uh, so chunks of takes an, an integer and a text and then returns a list of text. And then um, uh, transpose takes um, two pieces of text and it does exactly this, right? And then concat um, squishes them together. And so the amazing thing is that, is that this entire uh, tricky uh, transposition cipher can be expressed by And so if we take it, so this is using a little bit of point free, but so um, uh, we haven't talked about the compose operator yet, but it's just um, F composed with G is just the same as F called on G And so transposition um, really could also be more verbosely expressed like this. which is also the same as So the compose operator is completely analog analogous to above. And what's happening here is chunks of takes two arguments. It takes um, an, an integer and a text. And then it splits up that text into a list of chunks that are that size. And then transpose takes a list of text and puts the first list to be 
uh, the first character of each of the lists, and then the second list to be the second character of each of the text, and the third list, um, sorry, the third uh, to be, yeah, the third list to be the third and fourth and so on, which is exactly what's going on here. So it takes this list and it transposes them into these lists, doing the hard work for us. And then concat takes a list of text and returns a single text. So if you did get that one, um, uh, the decryption is not as easy as composing three out of the box functions. There's some things that you need to keep in mind. So if you, um, if you're ready to give that a try, you can, uh, you can jump over to dec decryption. And sorry, I haven't been as active. Can I help anybody with anything? Um, please pipe up if, uh, if I'm neglecting you. You have to, um, the issue with the opposite situation is what to do about these. It's kind of a tricky scenario. Yes. So the size, so the, since we throw away this, the size is the same. So you will know the length of the encrypted message is the same as the length of the original message. Yeah, because this is assuming you're not trying to hack it. So you have the key. So you know the number of columns as well. It's very hackable as well, but you just have to brute force. In data.txt, um, you might have to specify the. Uh, in in my, I did a very bad practice in my package.yaml, and I did not specify version numbers. And so, if you specify the version of data.txt in the package.yaml and you rebuild, it may give it to you. Or you can implement transpose yourself. Worst things have happened. <laughs> That's what I should have done is uh, locked it down into a version that didn't have the helper functions. Seriously though, I mean, how crazy is it? I mean, what other language 
do you get that, right? And the cool thing is, is that this is a very specific problem. And, but these, you know, atomic functions were not built to solve that specific problem. And they're very useful independently of each other, right? But it really shows absolute brilliance of the design of the language. When I was working on this workshop and I got to that, I was like, okay, I'm just going to start with the dirty one and then we'll get to a nice one. I did not think it was going to be nice. Okay, it'll give us just a few more minutes and then we'll start charging onwards. Sorry? Oh, it's pretty symmetric. It's pretty close. What did you do? I don't think that that's going to work. Is it? Um, try it with a different sized key. I thought it was, I did the same thing. I was like, oh, and it's going to be symmetric. And I was like, oh, it may not. This one is the nice case because <laughs> this, in this case, there's only one empty thing. And transpose and chunks will actually make these rows all correctly and then handle the last row correctly for decryption because there's just no character. But when there's more than one leftover spot, then it's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was almost such a beautiful vision. Shattered before my eyes. I did the exact same thing because I figured out this like composition stuff and it was like pretty late. And then I ran it a single time on decryption. I was like, I'm done. And like I got up in the morning and I ran it on a different thing and it didn't work. And I was like, was I dreaming? Like what happened? <laughs> it's like, oh no. Yeah, and you can figure out how many rows based upon the length of the message yeah. and the length of the key. Is this also like, and this also a fine place to this theory, but is this like you can have a recursive gate? Like can you do recursive rows? You have to do, you have to do, I'll tell you, I'll give one more hint and then just a few more minutes. So. You have to divide this into two problems. Uh, one problem is the one that you've already solved, which is how to deal with the situation where the rows complete. But then you also need to know, so what happens when the message doesn't line up and there's one or there's two or more that aren't finished? And so in the case, imagine I didn't draw a dot here. So in the case that this is a letter, and this is a letter, and we have two dots. When you're decrypting, the regular composition here will work fine with key. But it won't work on these. So if you can figure out how many are complete and how many are incomplete, then you can solve the problem here the same way, and then here with only a slightly modified solution. So you almost 
divide these up into two things, t.concat.transpose.chunks of, and then deal with this one, which is almost the same as this. So divide and conquer. Divide always with programming divide and conquer. And uh, the reason you can, this isn't super important, but anytime you have a function that takes an argument and nothing is being done to that argument except it is being applied to another function, you can remove the argument from both sides of the function equation. And so here, what we get from this back is a function that is waiting for a final argument, but because of that, we can still call it like so, and it will work as expected. So that's just a quick explanation of the elimination there, but not super important. Um, without type signatures, I prefer explicit arguments. So if, if you're not writing the type signature in the thing, I don't ever want to see that. But here, if you have the thing where it says, where this is int to t.text to t.text right there, then I know what's going on. But it is one of those things where it feels like people can get a little bit obsessed with trying to be clever about it. In this case, I think it makes a lot of sense because really what's happening here is we're creating a cipher um, with a key. And in, since you can, so, and, Transposition cipher isn't the message. Transposition cipher is a cipher. It's waiting for a message. But the most important thing is just to not get hung up on it. OK, what did I? Oh, yeah. H and Dent wasn't smart enough to catch that one. Never do 
<laughs> okay. So um, real quick. You can do match letters, a function like this, match letters uh, to column. You could do something like take in a message, a column, a key in a column. And then we could do some kind of recursive thing. Um, We could do a guard where if i is greater than t.length message minus one, we're done. Otherwise, and then we could um, use, no matter what column we're on, we would want to jump uh, a number equal to the key. And then we could just use our old pal snock. And oh, yeah. So that would start at uh, column zero and then match those over. And then um, we could also do a fold and just accumulate this over, matching letters to column as we go, with an empty string and zero up until the key minus one. Um, so that's, oops, a very not performant, but explicit imperative matching letters to column Sorry, I'm gonna run into trouble here. Oh. Okay, and then we already went through the other one. So let's talk about how to deal with uh, decrypting this. So um, if we, uh, we, can get the, we can get the key to decrypt it by taking the length of the message 
and dividing it by the encryption key and rounding up. And um, so in this case, um, uh, that's going to be um, and um, so. In this case, um, it's also going to be four. So if we take this and we do the same thing, Um, will decrypt. And the issue that we ran into, ran into is if we just use um, uh, chunks of transpose and concat that, and we have two or more columns, then the algorithm isn't going to do what we want. But think about it this way. So let's imagine we're in the scenario where um, we still have a key of four, but we've run into a situation where we have two things we want to throw away. So um, we found out that the original key, um, so in, in this scenario, um, let's deal with this abstractly first since I don't have a real, I was like trying to figure out how I could make sure I get the math right, but um, I can't. But this is going to be handled perfectly as is because the key length is four. So if we do t dot chunks of four here, compose with concat and transpose, then it's going to work perfectly. And this one, it will work perfectly as well if we do chunks of three. And we can figure out the length of the string at which we're going to have incomplete chunks doing a little bit of arithmetic. So. Um, Let's, uh, uh, I think, uh, yeah, five and four, sorry, I should count correctly. But the important thing is, is you can do t dot chunks of with the decryption key for everyone that's complete. And for everyone that's incomplete, you can do the t dot chunks of with the decryption key minus one. And you know that there's never going to be, um, so if there's a full row that's missing, then actually there's no one missing. And so, Yeah, so the, the encryption key would be four. The decryption key would. Let's do it with let's do it with a concrete example. The key takeaway is that the reason this is this is like the decryption uh, matrix. 
So, okay, five minutes, so I gotta do this really quickly. So, we have a key and a message. And we say we can get the message length by doing t.length with the message. And then we can get the decryption key by uh, taking the ceiling of the message length divided by the key. And so then we can get the remainder chunk count is going to be the key times the decryption key minus the message length. And then the remainder character count, and I'm doing some of this explicitly to kind of make the algorithm a little bit more obvious, so I'm capturing more things, times the decryption key minus one. And then we can get a tuple out of this using t.split at, and we can split at the message length minus the remainder character count of the message. And so then the chunks are going to be t.chunks of decryption key x's concatted with t.chunks of decryption key minus 1 y's and then composed A slight part. I have a slight error here somewhere. Here, like so. Anything else? Oops. Um, oh, we still have a few minutes, don't we? But do we go to 530? Yeah, you're not right. All right. Okay. So I, I want to go through this a little bit clearer so, to make sure that we understand what's going on specifically here. Um, so let's walk through, I think... Let's walk through exactly what's happening. So in this case, um, we have oh, 
so in this case, let's put both of these right next to each other. Oh, that's a bad example as well. Monadic.party. So let's take a column out of this. And we're going to have the input is going to be monadic party is a good time. And the key is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have So we have monadic party is a good time. So we've got two leftovers here. And let's do another table. So um, the key is six, and the length is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Here, let's just do this. Have Haskell help us out. Whoever invented smart quotes can roll in their grave. Right, so um, we know the decryption key is going to be 28 divided by 6, rounded up. So the decryption key is going to be 5. So. So we'll take um, M, C, Y, T. Yeah, we, we quit already, officially. I'm just going into some extra explanations. So no more new topics for today. Do not feel like you're held hostage. If you want to understand a little bit more about how this algorithm works, we'll just stick around, but, um, but nobody's held against your own will. Um, uh, MCY space T O space space G I N P I O M A A S O E D R space D space Did I do this wrong? Oh yeah, sorry, we have to, right. M, C, Y, space, T, O, space, space, G, I, N, P, I, O M A A S O space Hello, 
Oh, I, I got, I, when uh, I looked away, I got stuck on the wrong line. Um, M, C, Y, space, T, O, space, space, G, I, N, P, I, O, M, A, A, S, O, E, D, R, space, D, space, I, T, A, and then we've got two leftovers. So, based upon this, intuitively, we know that we can use the decryption key as is for um, four chunks but we're going to have problems. Um, we're going to have problems on the last two. And so, we get the remainder key chunk by multiplying key times decryption key minus the message length. So, key times decryption key gives us this. 30 squares. Then we minus the message length. That gives us this plus this. So the, the whole thing, key times decryption key is the entire box. Minusing the message length will give us, let us know that we have two boxes that are extra, which means we've got two boxes that are a problem, which means we know that there can only be one row that has boxes that are a problem, which means that there are exactly two chunks that are going to be need to use with a smaller key. Got it? So, since, so if this is 30 and the message length is 28, we know that there are two chunks that are a problem. If the whole thing is, if the decryption matrix is 35, and the message length is 30, then we know there are five bad chunks. And because of that, we can just say, since we know what the uh, good uh, chunk key is, we know that's a decryption key. Instead, we can just multiply the remainder times the decryption key minus one. So now that gives us, since we know that there are two chunks that are a problem, and they have the length of key minus one, that gives us this box. And so now we know exactly that we have this many characters are safe, and we know we can split here. So this line here gives us that split. And so now at this point, we have two text chunks. One takes us right to here. I shouldn't say chunks. We have two pieces of text, one here and one here. And since we know that, then we can use the chunks thing with the exact decryption key, decryption key minus one, and compose that with transpose and concat, and we're golden. And let me tell you, I was a happy person. <laughs> when that worked out. So that's it. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks.